Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and today I am going to get into a video on blockchain. Now, what is blockchain and its nuts and bolts? Basically, blockchain is a way to make sure that information that is being transferred from one person or one company or one government to another is secure in a manner that it's not tampered with and also that you can look back on it and make sure everything is legitimate. So whenever you hear blockchain, you may hear Bitcoin. It's important to note that blockchain has been around since 1991. It just hadn't really been used at all until Bitcoin, and that's where it gains popularity. However, after Bitcoin's taken off and, and stuff like that, basically the healthcare system, governments, and fewer things are starting to really look into it because it's a way to actually make sure that medical records tax information and other things are secure. But blockchain doesn't need Bitcoin, but Bitcoin does need blockchain. So as far as that goes. So to understand what a blockchain is, you need to know what a block is. And a block is really just three things. It's data, hash, and the hash of the previous block. Now, as far as data goes, this depends on the blockchain that we're dealing with and, and the block that we're dealing with. But um, with Bitcoin, you have the sender, the receiver, and the amount. And it's very important to note this, that the actual sender receiver part of it, that is actually not hidden in any way, um, given that the Bitcoin was not set up for this. How Bitcoin anonymizes people is instead of using names and stuff of this nature it uses account numbers and letters and stuff like that if you're able to link up the account to the person you can actually figure out the transactions by getting um, each and every person's account and again a person can have multiple accounts this actually makes it where um, it, it's almost impossible to figure out who's sending money to who again unless if you're able to figure out a given account and like that up to a given person now why is this important well let's say that you're using blockchain for something like medical well the thing is is you will probably have your social security number your name and maybe a few other things they don't want out there um, and, and it will compromise your security so for this as long as say one doctor and another doctor knows how to decrypt a given code so so as long as they know how to encrypt or actually their software automatically encrypts the social security number maybe your name and fewer things into some random junk and then when it gets to the other side, the doctors and whatever is able to decrypt that. As long as that's able, then things are secure and anyone appearing from the outside won't be able to understand anything. But it is important to note that um, unless if you add a layer of anonymity to it, this doesn't give you anonymity by de facto. So as far as that goes, let's get into hash. A hash is simply a fingerprint. Um, if, if you change the data within the block, then the, uh, the hash of the block changes it, itself. So this is fairly important for tamper proofing. Now I'll get into this in a second. And then we got the hash of the previous block. So how does this work? Let's say that we have three blocks. So three, the third block will reference to the second block. The second block will reference to the first block. And since the first block has nothing to re reference to, it is considered as the Genesis block. Now, as far as this goes, if the first or second block is tampered with what actually happens, this makes all other blocks down the chain invalid. And what this basically means is, is the hash changes for that given block. So maybe you're tampering with the second block. So this makes any block down the chain invalid. And that way people know that this is where the problem started from and, and that you, you have a problem with your, your chain. Now, as far as this goes, this in itself doesn't actually make things secure because the fact is, is 
as computers get faster, computers can easily figure out how to re-add the invalid information to make it valid and uh, and calculate the hash and what, what it's supposed to be. So what's going to end up happening is uh, the blocks actually have something that's called proof of work. Now, what is proof of work is basically an artificial time limit. Um, so with Bitcoin, you have a proof of work of 10 minutes. So it takes about 10 minutes for a new block to be made. And this basically slows things down. And this basically makes it where um, you not only have to, to figure out the hashes of every block going further down, say, for example, if you if you're messing with two and maybe you got 300 blocks, you, you not only have to figure out all the hashes for all the blocks further down, but you also have to figure out the proof of work going all the way down. So it causes more um, basically stress on the computer and, and it, it's harder for computers to do that. Now, with that one in mind, this in itself is insecure to a point. This is basically band-aid to the problem. And because of that, there is another level. Because keep in mind, as computers get faster and whatever, it, that, that, that can easily go out to one know where, you know, it, it, it's not a problem for a average computer to figure out these things. So how do you fix it uh, going even further? you have what's called a peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, what a peer-to-peer -peer network is basically this, and, and you will see this in video games and a few other places. Uh, if you ever heard peer-to-peer -peer network, it's probably from there. And what a peer-to-peer -peer network is basically where you connect to me um, directly, uh, th obviously through the internet, whatever it may be, and maybe uh, we have five or six other people who are connected to each other. And the advantage to this is every single person on that peer-to-peer -peer or P2P, if, if you see it anywhere, the, it's going to be, uh, they're going to have the same blockchain. If a new person gets added to the network, then they will get the full copy of the full blockchain. Again, this makes it where you need to keep in mind that the anonymity. So if you're dealing with maybe classified files or if you're dealing with healthcare stuff, is the information anonymous? So if some random Joe Blow somehow gets access to the peer to peer that, um, you know, some someone's social security number and whatnot's get, not getting out. That's very important to note to itself because they automatically get the full block into itself. So with that, um, because they get a full block and everybody has the exact same thing, the blocks check on each other. And if one individual adds a block to the blockchain, then everybody gets the block and it gets validated. And basically, if it, if it, if it checks out, then it gets added to everybody's blockchain. Now, it's important to note that this in itself is not also 100% secure. And, uh, and unfortunately, there's not much you can do when you get into this level. See, if the person who wants to tamper with the information, they would actually have to figure out the hashes in the proof of work, which is going to be very difficult into itself. But they also need to be able to mess with everyone's blocks on the uh, network and not only that they uh, 50 and you'll need to control 50 percent of the peer-to-peer -peer network so basically it's it's going to be extremely difficult for that to happen but still that is possible to some degree it's just statistically not not likely so with that one in mind, that's important thing. That, that's a very, very important thing to note into this. Um, in, in just real quick, um, off the top of my mind, a way for that to happen, that scenario I just talked about, if someone on the chain or, or maybe on the outside that knows about it actually infects the other 
computers in um, or some type of malware, and and that, that that might cause it where, depending on the malware, it, it might actually cause it where the uh, person who wants to change something can can change something. But again, they're going to have to affect everybody, and they're going to control fifty percent of the uh, the peer to peer. And they're going to have to to recalculate the proof of work for everybody's stuff, and it's it's just going to be a pain and a half to do that. But um, again, it's it's still theoretically possible. So again, whenever you hear blockchain, don't automatically think Bitcoin. But whenever you hear Bitcoin, you should probably keep blockchain in the back of your mind on how it works. Again, it's not a perfect system, but the more users you actually have something, so for example, Bitcoin, where it has a large amount of users, then it becomes pretty much impossible to mess around with stuff. Um, but, but also keep in mind, you have entities like the NSA and others that is known to affect near 97, 98% of computers out there so there, that's something to note into itself, and that's public numbers. So with that one in mind, um, it, 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 the more users you have, the more secure something is. Also keep in mind that just by using blockchain, it doesn't automatically guarantee anonymity, but it also makes it worth that someone can't just tamper with something that easily in uh and just get away with it basically everybody would have to agree to the change or they'll see the change on on stuff uh, with the new block so it's very very important to note that now if you got any questions anything like that then feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try and answer as quickly as possible. Leave a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next video. Hope you have a great day.